Hi guys, welcome to the Healthy Homemade Chocolates class on Skillshare. I'm Ashley and I'm going to be teaching you a really quick, easy, simple recipe on how to make your own homemade chocolates with three ingredients, or a little bit more if you want to get fancy and a little extra healthy, but there are probably already ingredients you have in your kitchen right now. And I really discovered this recipe kind of on accident a few years ago, and I was A, really tired of like running through the drive-thru or going to get ice cream or something at the store, and a lot of those things were just so full of like sugar and crap, and they just made me feel gross, and it was a lot, a lot of calories and a lot of sugar. It wasn't that healthy. And B, I was also tired of spending like, you know, five to seven dollars on a mocha or, you know, a little pint of ice cream somewhere. Um, when I just wanted a little sweet treat. So I stumbled upon this recipe and it's literally so simple, so great, so delicious, and pretty healthy too. And I'm gonna show you how to make it even healthier in further videos. So click enroll so you can join us on this super simple, awesome recipe on how to make homemade chocolates that doesn't break the bank nor hurt your waistline. I hope you'll join us, bye. Hi guys. Welcome to the class. I'm so glad you decided to join us. So when I say this is a simple recipe, I'm not kidding. Like this is probably stuff you already have in your kitchen and there's definitely not a lot of tools you need. I use some sort of mixing bowl, something. Um, I use this kind of measuring bowl because it's really easy to pour, but you can use a coffee mug. I've made it in cereal bowls, anything. You also need, you know, something to mix it with, a fork or a whisk, all stuff we have on hand. And if you like to measure and be really specific, measuring spoons are helpful. Um, I don't really like to bake or do anything super complicated, so half the time I just eyeball this recipe. Um, but it's really great. And I recommend, um, there's different ways we can do this. I typically make my chocolates in this ice cube mold. Um, tray with like these little silicone pop-out pieces it really helps um, because you're gonna put it in the freezer or the fridge that'll work too but today since I've already been experimenting with a ton of recipes this week um, we're gonna be using the paper plate method which works just as well all you have to do is put it in leave it for 20-30 minutes and then just kind of drop it on your counter and break it apart into pieces and it becomes almost like if you had like peanut brittle at Christmas time it becomes similar to that and I loved helping my mom make that stuff. So that's all we need for tools, seriously. Something to mix it in, with, something to mix it with, and something to freeze it in. It could be like a Tupperware. You could even use, um, or a Ziploc bag, that will also work. So step one is coconut oil. And this has to be unrefined coconut oil. Um, you'll see stuff like cold pressed or expeller pressed, stuff like that, virgin organic coconut oil, whatever, but it cannot be refined coconut oil because refined coconut oil has a different melting point, different temperature, um, even a different like taste and texture. And if you accidentally grab it, you'll be able to tell most likely. Um, they're usually really honest on the bottle, um, on a jar what type it is and the refined stuff will literally kind of taste like you're putting chocolate sauce on top of french fries um it just tastes like fry later oil to me so i do not recommend you grab that kind and this is coconut oil is pretty cheap it's you can find it in almost every grocery store now and it's really good for you so we'll be using two tablespoons roughly of coconut oil and mine is solid so if you're using your coconut oil and it's Kind of warm in your kitchen or your house um, typically melts over about 72 degrees so if it's already melted i might add a little bit more so there's that and we also need honey or some sweetener i mean if you have agave if you have regular sugar something like that that'll work as well i typically use about a teaspoon of honey and of course baking cocoa cocoa powder whatever you want to call it we need that as well so right now first step is putting in your coconut oil into your jar. So I'm going to do that, put it in the microwave for about 10 to 20 seconds so that it is nice and stirrable for the next step. So join me in a second.
Okay, so two tablespoons roughly of coconut oil are pretty melty from the microwave, fresh. And then the other trick, especially if you're using honey in your recipe or agave or some kind of syrupy sweetener, or if you're going to use regular sugar, this applies as well. I've really found that it's important to um, add in your honey, your sweetener, after your coconut oil is already pretty melted um, and pretty warm, and then put it in for another like 10 seconds or so. So you don't want to microwave it too long because the honey will kind of get a little burnt, but this works pretty good. I'm just going to give it a quick stir to emulsify it. And then we have our chocolate powder, of course. So our cocoa powder, and typically the recipe I use, when I just, I just make small batches, as you can see, these are two different batches um, that my husband has already gotten into this morning. <laughs> um, two tablespoons of coconut oil, roughly to two tablespoons of cocoa powder. Um, but today, since I'm going to add some more stuff in in the next video to show you kind of how to make it healthier and a little bit fun, we're going to go with a little bit less, and if you're going to add some stuff in, go with less at first, and then you can always add in more cocoa powder. And um, if you don't really like dark chocolate, which I love dark chocolate, um, definitely up your sweetener to your cocoa powder. So maybe do a tablespoon and a half of cocoa powder to maybe a full teaspoon, um, full tablespoon of honey or whatever sweetener you're using. So I'm going to do a little bit of this and then mix it up and I'll see you in the next video, video on ways to add to this to make it even healthier and a little bit fancy. Okay, so we just did the basic recipe and if all you're really looking for is super simple, easy, cheap chocolate recipe, feel free to stay right there and just go with that. But for some fun add-ons and some other kind of offshoot recipes that can be great, I've got a whole lot up my sleeve. So for my typical normal batch that I make really quickly, what I do is the basic recipe um, plus typically um, I have this organic maca concentrate powder. And I love maca. I take it for some health reasons and I've I'm not a professional here, so definitely go seek out a professional, do your research. Fun fact, a lot of local independent food co-ops and health food stores have very experienced, knowledgeable um, health coaches or herbalists or naturopaths in-house so they can answer questions for you. I highly recommend doing that, especially if you are on medication or have health problems. Um, double check. Don't mess with it. But... I like to put just a small scoop. I have this little scoop right here um, that's about an eighth of a teaspoon and I put a little bit of maku concentrate because it's really concentrated. And that, I do this because, um, and sometimes I'll also put some ashwagandha in there, just a little. Trust me, I've experimented <laughs> with adding more and it's not always very good because it'll change the taste considerably. But I love to add just a little bit of maca because my favorite thing, my favorite way to eat this chocolate is snacking on it throughout the day. I'll just have this full and eat two or three throughout the day whenever I come into my kitchen to make some iced coffee or, you know, tea or whatever while I'm working from home. And it gives me a nice little, you know, sweet treat, which is great. And it gives me a little boost of energy, which is awesome. Um, some other things that I've tried recently... I actually just tried the other day making a batch of lemon extract chocolates and I thought truthfully it would be gross but it's actually a really good like summery recipe there's all I mean vanilla extract there's lots of extracts if you love Nutella you can get a hazelnut extract if you love like mounds almond joy that kind of type of candy um, there's a lot of almond extracts, stuff like that. That would be great. Um, or another thing I love to do is find like a flavor infused honey or agave or some of those big coffee syrups that you can buy at the store um, that are flavored. So you could sub your teaspoon or two teaspoons if you like milk chocolate of honey 
in with maybe lavender honey is something that I've been meaning to try. Um, even possibly a spicy honey might go a long way if you kind of love that spicy chocolate um, type of flavor. If you love caramel chocolates, caramel coffee syrup would be fantastic. There's a lot of things you can try. There's also mint extracts that, I mean, extracts are usually pretty cheap at the store. I think this whole bottle was about $2. It's two ounces, and that'll last a long time. A little goes a long way. As always, when you're adding things, taste as you go. And mine tastes phenomenal with about an eighth of a teaspoon of maca in it. And there's also flavored stevias too. I love these. I keep them on hand for coffee, but when I started experimenting with a stevia in um, my chocolates, I was blown away. It was really good. And another thing is um, you can get like vanilla beans, and I have right here ground vanilla beans, which is really good. And I added probably a sixteenth of a teaspoon in just to give it more of that like rich fancy chocolate flavor you know the kind that you pay like seven dollars for a bar of chocolate at the you know fancy health food store it gives it that flavor which is really good and i think in this batch i'm also going to sprinkle a little bit of chia seeds on top of some of them to give it a nice crunch if you love nuts in your chocolate um Maybe if you love Nutella, grab a little bit of hazelnuts at the store in the bulk section and work out your frustration smashing them up and sprinkle them in your chocolate. That would be great. Pretty much anything goes. Experiment. Don't be afraid because it's, it usually ends up being really good. I love the lemon ones and I thought I would hate it, but I've been eating it all day. <laughs> um, the other really fun thing is do not put it in your plate or in your molds. Don't pour it on there. If you love ice cream, take this lovely chocolate sauce and pour it. This is homemade banana ice cream I made, um, chocolate banana ice cream. You can pour it on top of any ice cream, any frozen yogurt you love. And remember all the all the 90s kids can raise their hand on this. If you remember the like magic sauce you put on top of your um, ice cream, this is the same thing. It's made out of coconut oil, which, as you can see, gets solid when it's under 72, 75 degrees. This will harden on top of your ice cream, and it makes a really fun topping. So that's another great fun add-on to do, a bonus idea. So I hope you will experiment with these. And I'm going to put these in my molds, put them in the fridge, freezer for a little while, about 20, 30 minutes should do it, and then taste test, and then I'll be back for the next video to give you your project ideas. See you then, bye. Okay, loves, for your project, pretty simple. I would love to see you post your experiments and bonus points if you lick out the batter. I definitely do. I would love to see the different things you've experimented with and I would love for you to post a picture of some of the recipes you've come up with, the things you've tried, whether you've tried chia seeds in them or different extracts or flavorings. I would love to know what you've tried, give me a little ingredients list, and then um, post on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best chocolate you've ever had, and 1 being epic fail. Um, tell me how it was. I'm going to post these recipes, so the recipe I just made was the maca chocolate that I love, and it was very good. I've already eaten some of it. And this recipe was extra herbs. I put in some holy basil extract and it was, you'll have to find out in my project, go read it. And then these were the lemon extract ones. So I'll also be sharing how that recipe went. And I would just love to have you keep updating it as you go. Um, if you try the ice cream trick, if you make this magic ice cream sauce, um, send a picture, put it into your project and let me know how it was. And I just love to hear from you in the projects and keep updating your awesome experiments with this chocolate recipe. 
I'll see you in the projects and please if you love this class leave a review I would really appreciate it